Hey everyone and welcome back to part five in this series about using Facebook's 360 spatial workstation with Reaper. Uh, we've covered a fair amount of material in the last few videos. We looked at what resources we're going to need and where to find them, how to set up our Reaper session, how and where to place our effects in Reaper and some techniques for navigating around Reaper, importing material and editing that material. Today I want to go into a bit more detail about the actual plugins that we're using. Um, I'm going to go through each of the plugins in the Facebook 360 suite and tell you what they do. Uh, and I'm also going to cover the Sennheiser Ambio plugin and what it's doing for our session and why we need it. Uh, if you're more interested in the more practical sides of things and the actual using of these plugins, then feel free to skip straight to the next video where I'll be going over the Ambio plugin and how to use the Spatializer plugin to automate mono signals and spatialize ambisonic recordings. So without further ado, I'm going to switch over to screen sharing and disappear off into oblivion and then move over to Reaper. So you should now be able to see the Facebook 360 Spatializer plugin. This plugin replaces the panner in Reaper to give us 3D positioning as well as distance attenuation and room modeling parameters. So this has to be the last plugin in your chain on each channel. So all processing has to happen before that. Any compression, EQ, any other effects has to happen before this plugin. And this needs to be the last one in the chain before sending it out to another AUX channel with the Facebook 360 control plugin on, which we'll go into more detail about in a minute. We can use this to view a 360 video in this section up here and then move sound around based on an object's movement in that video. So on the left hand side, you can see all of the parameters that we get to play with. So starting at the top, we have our input selector. This defines what the format of the uh, material we are using is so that the Spatializer plugin knows how to behave. We have left and right, so this is taking either the left or the right channel of a stereo file uh, and working with that. We have a mix down, so that's taking our stereo information and mixing it down into one mono file. We have two uh, options for first order B format, so this is anything that you've recorded with an Ambio microphone. We have Fuma orders and we have Ambix orders. We have stereo, which is obvious, this is stereo, so you end up with a left and a right option to play with. And then we have other surround formats, so quad, 5.0, 6.0, 7.0, and some second and third order AMBX information. So moving down, we have our positioning parameters. We have azimuth, which controls our objects positioning on a horizontal plane relative to our listener's head. We have elevation, which moves it up and down. Distance moves it further and closer to us. And spread, which if we had a stereo file would dictate how far left is relative to right. We have attenuation, so this dictates how much a signal is going to get turned down uh, when we move it further away from us. Directionality, so this is kind of dictating where this signal is pushing its sound. So say I have a signal in front of me here, like I do here, I can move that so that it's either facing me or away from me, and that will simulate sound moving in particular directions from that source. We have the Doppler effect and we have our room reflections options as well. Up here is where we can import our 360 video. They need to be a specific format. You need to make sure that when you receive these, they are in DNXHR brackets LB. Uh, they don't need to be high quality. Uh, 720p is fine and probably recommended for most machines because it can be quite taxing moving around, moving stuff around a 360 video. Uh, but to import, all we need to do is select here, and then we navigate to where our video is stored, click open and leave it on mono. We have different options here depending on our format, our 360 format. Generally, you're gonna have monoscopic. So leave it on mono and then click load. And this will bring in our equirectangular video. So we have our 360 video in here, and it's also opened this 360 viewer. So we can actually view it as a 360 video if we want to. You'll notice that the quality is pretty low here, and I kind of tend to avoid using this as much as possible, but it's a good way of referencing how it's actually going to be 
uh, viewed on Facebook or YouTube or anything like that. But for now, we're going to close it. You'll also notice that this has appeared on top of the video, this little number one. Uh, and this is relative to this one down here. So if I move this one, it moves that one as well. So we can actually move stuff on the video um, so we get a proper reference of where things are rather than just having to do it like this, if that's what you want to do. We also have the tracker over here. So if we want to automate the whole process of moving the sound around based on how an object is moving, we can do so with the tracker. It's quite simple, but it's not the most reliable thing in the world. So closing that and moving on, we have our 3D master channel here. And this has our converter plugin and our mix loudness plugin. So what do these actually do? So the converter plugin is a utility con for converting ambisonic audio to any other formats. Okay, So it's able to rotate the sound fields uh, for occasions where the spatial mix or submix needs to be rotated within the scene. Uh, or if the pre-existing ambisonic mix needs to be corrected, so it's facing the wrong direction relative to the video that we're working with. Uh, if you look up in here, we have our input section where we can select our input formats. We're gonna leave this as third order ambisonics for now because these spatializer plugins that Facebook provides outputs third order ambisonics. Rotate is where we can actually move and rotate the entire room around and it will be reflected in our final export. And that's an important thing to remember. This is where those adjustments will be remembered in the control plugin later on. They won't be, but I'll go into more detail on that in a second. Uh, gross order gain, which is an optional setting, uh, sorry, cross order gain, which is an optional setting. Um, um, I believe that adjusts uh, for gain differences when you're trying to convert from third order ambisonics into any other format. And then we have our output format. So if we want to output to anything other than third order, we can. We can output to binaural, first order, second order, and so on, if that's something that you want to do. Moving down, we have our mix loudness plugin. Now this plugin needs to be located between our spatializer plugins and before our control plugins in our signal flow. Um, and it just provides an extra layer of control before we get to that final stage uh, before export. Now, while the Spatializer plugin can accept really any format from mono all the way up to third order ambisonics, the input for the converter plugin can be either B format and BX or Spatial Workstation 8, which is Facebook's proprietary format and channel ordering. Um, it's probably better to just use uh, AmbiX third order as this is uh, kind of consistent with the vast majority of workflows out there. The output can be set to binaural, first order, third order, second order, as well as Facebook's spatial eight channel workstation. So if I choose works eight channel workstation here, we can output that format there as well. You can put this at various points in your signal chain or in combination with other things. You can put this on a single door track after your spatializer plugin to route all sources on the track. You can put this on a single ambisonic bus as we are now and receive output from multiple spatializer plugins. Uh, so you can rotate the spatialized mix on all tracks at the same time, or you can put it on the same track as the control plugin, and it must be before the control plugin, to rotate the entire mix before passing it on to the control plugin. I'm keeping on the separate channel to keep my signal flow clear and to keep the controls as separate as possible so we know exactly where the things are when we need them. Moving down, we have our mix loudness plugin. So the difficult thing with working with 360 audio, particularly with video, is that the viewer or listener can look wherever they want whilst consuming this stuff. So we never really know where they're going to be looking, meaning that the loudness can't be determined at the mix or mastering stage. So we need to use a combination of our ambisonic loudness plugin and our stereo loudness plugin. So the ambisonic loudness plugin called the mix loudness plugin in this suite needs to be on our 3D master channel. And the stereo loudness plugin needs to be on our headlock master channel. So what these two are doing is they're working together to provide an idea of the overall loudness of our mix, taking into account our spatialized information and our stereo information. So the stereo loudness plugin is sending all of the information that it's receiving to this mix loudness plugin and creating an average uh, in LUFS or DPFS for 
both mixes combined. I hope that makes sense. And now we're going to move on to our control plugin. So the control plugin is the final plugin in our signal chain. It has to be on an aux channel receiving from all spatialized channels in the project. So in this project, what we're doing is we have our spatialized channels over here. They're sending their audio to the 3D master, which is then sending it out to the control plugin, our final plugin in our signal chain. So it's our final port of call. So we can only have one of these per project. And even if I try to add another one, so if I come over here, FB360, and I try to add another control plugin, it's gonna tell me that there must only be one plugin of this type in this session and we have to remove this instance. So it's not going to work if there's multiple versions of this plugin in there. Now I have to reiterate again that all audio processing has to be applied before this plugin. You can see this as our final master section pre-export for our spatialized tracks. So all audio processing, any compression, any EQ, reverb, everything that is happening to the spatialized tracks has to happen before this plugin. And this must be the last plugin in the chain. So that's why I'm keeping it as its own separate channel and leaving it as the only plugin in this effects browser. So we can do multiple things with this plugin and its most useful feature is its binaural decoding. So this is going to give us an idea of our 360 environment if we're working in a space that doesn't necessarily have an immersive speaker setup. So we can listen on headphones and get a proper sense of how this is going to sound. We can also use the mix focus and the get from video section to adjust and reference the direction that our listener may be looking in to hear what it might sound like when they're looking in that direction. So this provides more of a preview while we're mixing or editing or producing material for this format and the adjustments that we make do not get applied to our final spatial mix. This is all the process that gets applied in real time when we get to the consumer's end. So this is them dragging around the video, looking around on their phone, all of that sort of stuff. This is what this is mimicking. So there's one final plugin that I wanted to cover and that is the Sennheiser Ambio A to B format converter. And what this plugin is doing is it's converting our raw A format ambisonic recordings that we've taken with our Sennheiser Ambio and converting them into B format so that we can actually use them within our project. So it's very simple. It's like a simplified version of Harpex. And we can't do a huge amount to manipulate the sound here. All it's really doing is moving the channels around so that things actually spatialize properly relative to how we recorded it. So when we recorded it, there are a couple of things that we need to note. As we already know, we need to note down that we've recorded in either AmbiX or Fuma formats. And then we need to make note of the direction that the microphone was pointing when we were recording. So we have three options down here. We have upright, upside down, and end fire. And this is relative to the options that you have in the F4 that's provided with the Ambio. So upright, upside down, end fire. I know that for this project, I was recording in end fire, so the microphone pointing forwards. So I'm going to select end fire here. I can also add a low cut filter. If that's something that I want to do to reduce stand or wind noise. And then I can select my output format. So we have classic Fuma and AmbiX. So these are just different orders. If you look down here, you can see how that changes. So we have WYZX and WXYZ. We're going to stick to AmbiX just because it's consistent with the rest of the Facebook 360 workflow. So this needs to be placed on any spatialized track that contains ambisonic recordings and needs to be placed before the FB360 Spatializer plugin. So what this is doing is it's converting that information, passing it onto the Spatializer plugin, which is looking for first order AmbiX B format. And then that's going to spatialize properly and output that to our 3D master and our control track for our, 360, for our final 360 composition. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to go into more detail about how to use the Spatializer plugin, particularly with mono content, so we can spatialize stuff that wasn't recorded with an ambisonic microphone. Then we're going to go over using the Spatializer with ambisonic content, which is very quick and easy to do. And I've kind of covered already, but we'll go into a little bit of information about that. 
And then I'm going to talk a little bit about exporting your project and bringing it all together so that it ties in with the video content that you currently have. So stick around and watch those and ask any questions if you have them. Cheers.